you don't realize how much of a weight you're carrying until somebody or you lit takes it off your shoulders and then you're like wow so this is what it feels like to breathe <laughs> How I got into the lawn business. So I actually been cutting grass for as long as I can remember. Um, I think when I was five years old, I went out with my father for the first time. He uh, was the original dual and cut and trim sole proprietor. And uh, I remember going out with him. I wasn't allowed to do anything, but uh, I had to sit in the truck with him. And <laughs> at one point, because I was so bored, he ended up giving me a, a pair of scissors and was like, just go through the lawn and find anything that uh, I missed and cut it. Shortly after that, I think by the time I was six, um, I was running a push mower for him in the smaller areas. And I think by the time I was nine, I was running a commercial walk behind. It was actually the same style of mower I use now, the Toro Pro lines of the T-Bar. I think that's why I'm partial to that machine because that's what I used when I was a kid. My father was running that business and he did it full time for a long time, um, but eventually he went back to work uh, for someone else and was doing doing cut and trim on the side. And uh, I remember, it sticks in my head, I was 15 or 16 years old and my father asked me if I wanted to take over the business when I grew up. And I told him no. I, I think not too long after that, let the business go. Uh, when I was 18, I started working for a construction company um, and uh, hurt my knee, which is, had been an ongoing issue for me. I think I've had either three or four knee surgeries over the course of my late teens. And I hurt my knee again working for that construction company and uh, I was going to college uh, studying child development. And so I, I decided I needed to get into that field somehow, some way, and started working part-time uh, for the Department of Social Services in Maryland. Um, I was just working in the file room at the beginning. By 2010, I had gotten my degree. Uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up uh, working in the foster care department. Um, and I worked there uh, for a total of not quite six years. Uh, so I was doing so I was doing foster care and I actually loved that work um, but the job was very brutal on the administrative side um, there's a lot of paperwork involved a lot of redundancy involved uh, honestly a lot of absurdity involved um, and uh, the pay is not good to supplement the income um, I started uh, cutting grass and uh, when I started I actually was just using a um, uh, a push mower I got on Craigslist for 40 bucks. It was a, it was a Murray push mower, and uh, I had for my house um, a 40 volt Ryobi string trimmer and an 18 volt Ryobi blower. This would have been 2015. Yeah, 2015. The battery technology was not where it is now. Um, the string trimmer, I could do two lawns on a single charge. Uh, the blower, it required two batteries per property. So I was having to charge batteries on the way to the different property and hope I had enough charge you know, by the time I got to the next uh, lawn. So in that first season going part time, you know, it was supposed to supplement my family's, it was supposed to supplement our income. But I had to buy so much new equipment that uh, it didn't, it just wasn't happening. Um, so that year going part time, I, I'm, I'm just going to skip the whole progression. But basically I started with a battery operated blower and trimmer and a $40 Craigslist uh, uh, mower. So by the end of the season, I was running a 30 inch Toro Time Master, a 33 inch Troy built walk behind. Um, an Echo SRM225 string trimmer, um, and I think an Echo 580 backpack blower, uh, and some yeah, some other stuff. Um, and in the beginning of the 2015 season, I actually bumped into a guy I knew from high school. We were talking, and he, I asked him what he did for a living, and he told me that he he ran a lawn and landscape business. And I was like, no way, me too. 
And so we talked about that, you know, and I'm th feeling this camaraderie. Well, come to find out later, his business uh, was doing well over a million dollars a year in revenue, while my business was doing 10,000. <laughs> Felt a little stupid about that conversation after I realized that. Well, in November of 2015, I get a call from him out of the blue asking if I'm interested in doing snow this year. He only does uh, commercial snow removal, so if I was if I do residential, you know, he would send con he would send uh, leads my way. So I told him I was like, well, I'm interested in it, but I honestly, I have no clue how snow works, so I you know I don't know anything about it. And uh, she said, well, you know, let's get together and we'll talk about it. So we met, I remember it very clearly. We met uh, the week of Thanksgiving at a Panera. Is it a Panera? Yeah, it was at a Panera. I remember that because I don't like Panera. And everybody I meet with likes to meet at Panera. So we met there and pretty much the first thing he did was give me the audio book of uh, the E-Myth. And he said, you know, I think you should listen to this book. And uh, he then spent the next three hours talking to me about the lawn business, discussing how I could grow my business, um, and encouraging me that uh, I could do this full time. And, you know, uh, that was the first time anybody had ever said that to me. You know, uh, up until that point, everyone that I had talked to had just said, hey, you know, just keep in mind, you don't want to go into lawn care full time. And uh, there was also a lot of people who were not very kind about the fact that uh, I was, and to an extent am, uh, very large. Um, by the time I left social services, I was, I was tipping the scale at almost 400 pounds. Um, and so, you know. I, I mean, and I was out of shape. I mean, I remember many times, you know, cutting the grass and having to stop to throw up um, and, then, and then keep going. Um, so he was the first person that actually sounded like he actually believed in me and believed that I could do it. So that got me thinking and it got me thinking hard. And so two weeks after that conversation... I decided, you know what, I'm going to make this business so big that I'm going to have no choice but to quit social services. Because, like I said, that job was getting pretty miserable. Um, there, I'd had uh, anxiety attacks, panic attacks. Um, I was getting sick all the time because I didn't want to go to work. It was a bad situation. So, so two weeks after he and I talked, I decided I was going to do what I could to make this business a success and I started getting up at 4 a.m. every single morning and working on the business from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. every single morning and then I would go to work at DSS, spend time with my family in the evening and then get up the next morning and do it again and I did that every single day, seven days a week. So I kept working on that, kept working on that and things that my job at social services kept getting worse um, and without going into a whole lot of detail I uh, a situation happened and I personally feel like I was not treated fairly I think my superiors at the time would have felt differently uh, if you were to ask them but and I just kind of snapped and said I'm done gave them my two weeks notice said I'm out of here I can't work here anymore um, that was in <laughs> that was in February so my last day with the Department of Social Services was actually February 26th of 2016 and the lawn season didn't start for another I guess month um, after that uh, after I quit social services so that was actually a bit nerve-wracking, but it was also very exciting because the day I quit social services, my depression and anxiety went away and it hasn't come back. Um, you know, sometimes you don't realize how much of a weight you're carrying until somebody or you lit, takes it off your shoulders and then you're like, wow, so this is what it feels like to breathe. <laughs> so that's how I started working in the lawn business full time. Uh, I had no business going into the 
business full time. And uh, when I went to renew my contracts for my customers, only five customers uh, renewed. So not only was I starting a lawn business without the proper uh, uh, preparation, I guess, or you know, the proper timing, um, but I was also going to start it with five customers. Uh, so that was terrifying. Um, but you know, using Craigslist and uh, um, Facebook, I started marketing hard um, uh, and uh, started cutting grass in April of 2016. Uh, by the end of May, I was up to 70 customers. That eventually leveled out on around 50. And it, uh, it took off from there. I made the decision early that I wasn't going to go into debt for my business. Um, I'd heard too many horror stories about guys, they uh, you know, financed equipment and then the winter comes, they can't afford to pay the, to pay the uh, fees and they get their equipment taken away. So I didn't want anything to do with that. So that's, uh, that's how I got into the lawn business. Um, so it's 2018 and about a little over two weeks. Um, I'm going to be starting my third season full time and man, I got to tell you, it's the best decision I ever made. In 2016, I was able to equal my income from when I was at working at social services. 2017, I was able to effectively double it and uh, I cannot wait to see what happens this year. I really feel like... Uh, uh, working in the lawn business was a gift from God and it's really fascinating to me how that all worked out because you know if it hadn't been that one business owner with a business that was massive um, I, I probably never would have done it and I would be even more depressed I probably end up in the hospital and uh, I would still be you know just as out of shape as ever you know at one point i was up to 412 pounds uh and now i'm in i'm hanging out in the 290s um and uh, hopefully i'll lose more but uh, uh you know this business has been great for me it's been great for my family it's been great for my psyche um so i just wanted to pass that on and tell you guys this is how i got into lawn care i'd be interested to hear what other people's stories are i think there's some of those types of videos floating around on youtube uh so this is randy with dual and cut and trim thanks a lot for watching <laughs>